What's up, USCO legends? Welcome back to another video. Everyone is always talking about how you need to be producing phenomenal high quality content, but how do you actually produce this content? So in this video, I'm going to walk you guys step by step how I go about creating content that ranks and performs really well on Google. I'm going to use a real life example so you guys can follow exactly what I'm doing at home. And before we actually start, there's a list of six essential things that we need to cover. Number one, this might be pretty basic, but we need to find a topic. For this video's example, I'm going to be taking a look at the content. What is vegan leather? So number two is we need to make sure that the topic that we're targeting actually has traffic. That's the main idea behind SEO, right? We want to make sure that our website comes up for a competitive keyword that are getting traffic. As a result, we're getting users and potential customers to our website. So if we quickly take a look at Ahrefs for the keyword that I picked, what is vegan leather? We see that it has a monthly volume of 10K. So this is gonna be a great example to break down for you guys. The next thing we wanna do is we, we want to identify the search intent. The search intent is the meaning behind that user's search, right? So why exactly did they put that keyword in? What are they looking for, right? So there's four main ways to break down search intent. So the first one is navigational. That's for users that are looking for informational content and that are looking to be pointed in one direction or another. Informational, pretty self-explanatory. People that are just looking for top of funnel information on a specific subject. Transactional, this is a user that's quite ready to purchase something online. And then we have commercial for that user that's looking to compare different options for a possible future purchase. So once we understand the search intent, we're then going to be able to decide on the type of content that we produce. So for this specific keyword, if we scroll down to the results and we open up some of these guys, so I'm going to open up this one, I'm going to open up this one and this one, we're going to see that most of these keywords are targeting that informational search intent, right? So it's just people looking for answers and it's people looking to educate themselves on this specific topic, right? So a lot of long form content looks like PETA is also plugging in um, some products here. That's a little bit weird. Then we have it looks like it's a, a leather brand. But again, and we do see some products here. But most of this is very long form content, right? And if we just check out this last one, this is also very long form content. We know more or less that that search intent is informational, right? It's for users that want to know more about vegan leather what it's made out of and what it is exactly. So now that we have the search intent, we know that we most likely need to write some form of long form article or a blog type post, right? Had we seen a bunch of results of specific products and landing pages for e-commerce websites, then we would have known that a blog post might not be the best result, but instead it would make sense to create an e-commerce category, subcategory, or a product page, right? So that's why it's so important to take a look at the competitors and understand the intent behind that user's search, right? So now that we know the content type, we're going to be creating a blog post or a long article. We then need to decide on the format, right? So there's a lot of different formats behind blog posts. So we can have a list from one to 10 of the best ways to become vegan, for example. We can have a how-to or a complete guide right? Uh, we can have opinion pieces, we can have news articles. So there's a bunch of different types of formats of these long form articles, but it looks like for this specific keyword, um, what is vegan leather? We're looking at a complete guide. There is this one result that has a 10, a 10 things you need to know. It looks like a list type article, but what might make the most sense here is a complete guide or a how to type of long form article, right? So now we know the type and the format of the content that we're going for. And finally, guys, the last thing right before we start writing this content is we need to take a look at the angle. So again, we're taking a look at some of these competitors and we can just read some of these titles just to know more or less which direction they're going with this specific keyword, right? So vegan leather, what is it? Why it belongs in your closet? All you need to know. What is it? How is it made? 10 things you need to know. And then we have this one that's a little bit different. We're going to talk about it in a second. Then we have the ultimate guide, everything you need to know all you need to know. So it looks like the most common angle is creating that all you need to know complete guide, what it is explaining absolutely everything, right? And then we have the seventh result um, written by Harper's Bazaar that's talking about a semi controversial different take on this specific topic. So is the vegan leather worse for the environment than real leather, right? So just the fact that it's giving a different angle to this specific content, even though it might be talking about the exact same thing, it makes it slightly more interesting. And it gives it a different angle that users might want to read. So we need to think about the angle that everyone else is taking and we need to decide if we want to go down the same path or maybe go against the grain, go a completely different direction and bring a different take to the search results. So there's a lot of different ways 
we can do this. And now that we know absolutely everything about the type of content, the format, the angle, we can already imagine the type of content that we're going to be producing. Now is when we get to the writing. But actually, even before we start writing, sorry guys, I would advise you guys to properly sketch out an outline of the structure. And we have to be extremely mindful here, guys, of the on page and the structure. Just as a quick recap, we need to have a hierarchy of headers. That's really important. So we want to have ideally one H1. We want to shove a keyword right in there. And then under the H1, we want to have a bunch of H2s. Under H2s, we're going to have H3s, so on and so forth. We also want to make sure that we've added that main keyword to the URL, the title, the meta description, and again, the H1, right? So these are just some of the basics. I've made a complete on page checklist video if you guys want to check it out right here. But when we're talking about all those different headings and subheadings, we'd actually like to structure that content by having a variety of different subheadings that also includes smaller subset of keywords from that main topic. So let me show you guys what I mean. So if this is our main topic, what is vegan leather? What I want to do now is I want to find a few ideas that I could list under that H1 as an H2 or maybe as an H3. How could we structure this content? What are the different ideas we could write about? This is where we do it and we do it with keyword research, right? So let's just take a look at some of these results. So what is it made out of? We're most likely going to talk about that. The material, what I want to take a look at, I'm not liking these results. Let's take a look at related terms. So let's see if we have some more luck here. So again, uh, what is it made out of? What is it made out of? So we can, we can do a vegan leather versus real leather. Talk about the different pros, cons, how one's made, how the other one's made. That could be an H2 and a whole different subsection. So we we could talk about how durable it is. That's definitely a potential H2. What else could we do here? So we could talk about the materials. That's probably going to be in there. How is it made? We could talk about, let's see, again, the durability here. Does it stretch? How to make it at home, right? We can have a whole different subsection of that specific idea. So now that I've found some of these ideas, I'm just going to copy and paste some of these headings over to the notion to visualize the potential structure that I could have of this article. And while I'm taking a look at this, I'm also thinking about all the different featured snippet opportunities that I could be targeting. If you guys haven't checked out that video, you can check it out right here. When we're creating content, we need to be mindful of all the different featured snippet possibilities that we could be targeting, right? So for example, how to make vegan leather. If we answer this in the concise ways between 40 to 50 words right under this specific question, and if we made sure that this was an H2, there's definitely a possibility that this could be picked up as a featured snippet if this piece of content ended up ranking and doing significantly well, right? Another thing we could do here, vegan leather versus real leather. We could do a table like comparison, looking at one versus the other. And that could also be a great possibility for a featured snippet. So now we have an idea of what that content is going to look like. We have an idea of all the different things we need to talk about, and we're ready to go out and write content. Or guys, if you're looking for a quicker, more hands-free option, I recommend working with Surfer SEO. You guys need to check this out. Within Surfer SEO, there's a tool called the Content Editor. I've made videos about it in my channel in the past, but basically it will do everything we've done within a click of a button. So let me give you guys an example. I'm just going to type in what is vegan leather. I'm going to create that content editor and this honestly saves me so much time. I use this on my own projects and when I'm working with clients because this is a way faster way of creating content that's perfectly optimized and that performs really, really well. So once that finishes up, we can just open this up and we're going to have a score the whole time while I write in this specific text editor, we're going to see that content score go up and down and we're going to have a bunch of different suggestions in terms of words, headings. Um, and the specific terms and the number of times we should be including each term, each variation of those keywords, right? So this is great for those of you that are looking to speed up some of these processes. We're also going to have different suggestions in terms of headings, even though I recommend personally going in and doing some keyword research. But if you're worried about the exact keyword density and making sure that the article is perfectly optimized, then I recommend you guys work with something like Surfer SEO. Link for that in the description. And now once we've structured, we've written that content, then we can finally go out and launch it and wait for it to just absolutely skyrocket. Boy, you guys, that isn't always the reality. So the success of your content is going to be dependent 
on a variety of different factors. I can't cover everything in one video, but one of the most important ones is gonna be how much of an authority Google considers your website to be for that specific niche. And one of the main ways we can get authority is through link building and the types of backlinks that we've gotten in the past. If you guys wanna learn more about link building, I recommend you guys check out this playlist where I guide you guys through everything you need to know about link building. Thanks for staying till the end, guys. I'll see you in the next one.